Is a will you marry me in your future? Or maybe you do it all over again. Hi, I'm Brian Toon with Jewelry Design Center, inviting you to come see the largest selection of will you marry me in the state of Montana. The brightest diamonds of every shape and size, unique settings built to last, and skilled jewelers on site offering free sizing and maintenance for life because that's how long we want to be your jeweler. Jewelry Design Center in Missoula, on Brooks, across from the Montana Club. Big Sam Breakdown, proudly presented by the Bobcat Collective at Montana State. The Bobcat Collective is the NIL collective that serves Montana State University student-athletes. The collective has partnered with Montana State to connect fans, alumni, businesses, and local nonprofits with Montana State student-athletes. Opportunities through the collective allow student-athletes to earn compensation while serving the greater Montana State University community. Sign up now for memberships and enjoy automatic entry into raffles for free tickets while supporting the bright minds at Montana State. They have multiple multiple different membership tiers, and you can also be a one-time supporter, and you can also business partner or corporate supporter. Visit BobcatCollective.com for more. Well, riding with Ryder, we're actually riding down I-90 now. He's on his way back to uh, the Magic City, so be safe. <laughs> it looks like you're not driving, though, right? You're just riding. I'm not driving. I got a, I got a, uh, I got a counterpart here help me out. So That's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, maybe we, can, we can give him 15 minutes worth of football talk to to entertain him. So he, and he loves it. <laughs> let's start with the uh, the the end of the the Montana State Eastern Washington game. I, I actually thought it was an important moment for Montana State to struggle and then prove that they could slam the door on a team, and they did. And I also thought it was an important and also a forgettable moment for Tommy Malat to do what he did sort of down the stretch in that game. Just your impressions of Montana State's 42-8, uh, 28 win over Eastern Washington. Yeah. Uh, winning up there is hard, Colter. Going to Cheney is a hard place to go play. Uh, I don't know what it is about uh, the weather up there. It always seems to be just about what you saw on Saturday. It's so strange. Maybe that's just when the Cats and the Grizz are up there, uh, weather always is a little bit of an issue. Um, but, uh, yeah, like you said, good to see them find a way to close the door and uh and do it in a you know in a difficult environment but also doing it what they do best which is just like look we're gonna take our strength it's our strength versus you know versus you and, and we're gonna kind of impose our will on you we're gonna run the football and it's good to see a guy like tommy in his fourth year Coulter, that we've we've seen him grow we've seen him mature and making some good decisions down the stretch uh you know a 75 yard touchdown run uh fun to see him uh, you and I were trading some text back and forth, but to see him open up the uh, the gas a little bit and and just finding a way to get some stops on defense um, uh, down the stretch is, is equally as important. Um, I got a chance to just rewatch a little bit of that uh, defensively, just needing to continue to to grow at the linebacker position. I think you could see some of that, um, some false steps here and there, both are there. At linebackers, like you have got to be as my good buddy Kane I would say slow to go fast to finish and you your eyes have got to be in the right position and um you can see those guys are just like they're they're floating a little bit linebackers should never float what you should be doing is your eyes on your key and you're you're downhill uh and, and you're, you should be triggered fast and you saw so window dressing from you know uh from eastern we saw that that end around that went the distance and uh, so some youth that's exposed at linebacker. You and I have talked about that in the past weeks um, with Bryce Greeby and, um, and with Neil Daly. Uh, those guys have got to come along fast because there is nobody else behind them. Um, and so excited to see what Sac State brings here. But all in all, shutting the door, decisive win, still winning by you know two-plus scores, really good win for the Cats. Uh, against an Eastern team that's given some other teams uh, fits in the big sky. The uh, the the fact that Eastern's quarterback was a late scratch, not making excuses for the Cats, but is that is that like, how hard is that to adjust defensively, especially if the other guy has a, a different skill set? Yeah, yeah, totally. I I think it's it's definitely harder. Again, going back to the youth at your linebacker position, where you're like, boy, uh, it's my job to get guys lined up and uh, make sure the front's right. And my eyes are supposed to be on the right uh, in the right place, and you could see that right out of the gate. The quarterback run game um, again. I haven't watched a ton of film, and, and how much of Asparis was doing quarterback run game directly, but they got Walker involved in that QB run game quickly, and 
they just seemed to look like a step slow. So I think when you, you, you throw a wrench in the plan for young linebackers that are supposed to be calling the front and knowing what to expect, and you've been showing them certain pictures all week long, and that turns out to be a different case, that, that's a lot to adjust. But I think down the stretch, they did a good job. Certainly. And also, you know, I think that more than just preparation or lack thereof, I think also Eastern had played three quarterbacks all year long, and it was sort of obvious when they put in Wortham that he was just running the Wildcat. But then in this game, without Vesperis, now all of a sudden you're just playing Taylor and Wortham. And so then there's a lot more mystery to what's going on because Wortham's just playing more and they ran more stuff with him. But then also you can just tell. Well, the other part is like credit where credit's due, right? I mean, that 75-yard touchdown that they scored with Wortham, Easter Washington, that is, man, I mean, first of all, he's just a sick athlete, man. He was off to the yeah. races. He's, yep. that's, that's a tough guy to stop. He's like, he reminds me a little bit of Sean Johnson. He's kind of small but fast. But then he also yep. plays quarterback somehow. But he's also their kick returner and their slot. And he can even play defense. He's a talented dude. Anyways, I just thought that they caught the cast off guard. But – in-game adjustments, good, because I thought they slammed the door on them and they really buckled down the last 18 to 20 minutes of that game. Yeah, yeah, they, they definitely did. Uh, I, you know, worth noting, too, that, you know, Efton Chisholm, again, kept finding his way into the end zone again. You know, Jared Taylor threw that that ball in the, I think it was the first quarter, a little fade ball over the shoulder, and I think it brought it to 14-14, something like that. But, um, and then, the, uh, you know, the quick giveaway on special teams for the Cats, so they stole possession early. That's a big factor. Um, it's just all in all, like, you know, winning on the road's hard. I say it every single week, but it's the truth. And you find a way, you got a few wrenches that are thrown with a new quarterback and, um, you know, young defense, uh, good win. And um, I think Eastern, uh, you know, doesn't have that same talent, but they do have got some, some real skill positions sprinkled throughout what you just mentioned. Uh, so I, I think they're, you know, going to continue to give fits here for the next three weeks for some of these big sky teams. So good win for the Bobcats on the road. Here's the thing, man. Eastern's going to have an influence on the playoffs because they just played the five best teams in the big sky in a row. They only won one of those games. Now they get the other teams. They're going to mess some teams up the next couple of weeks if they're if they're still in it, like if they haven't rolled over and quit. But then here's why they're going to have an, uh, an impact on the playoffs. They played Northern Arizona in Flagstaff the last game of the season. So yeah. if, if NAU wins the next two, they're going to have to beat Eastern Washington. And, yep. I mean, you know Coach Bess is going to be going in there being like, rat spoiler, this is our playoff game, boys. Let's go a- in here. And absolutely, game. absolutely. And I, I love Coach Brian Wright. You know, he was ROC at, at MSU. So, uh, got to, um, you know, rub shoulders with him. And he'll have his team ready. But, boy, that, that's interesting. And I think it's great for the big sky. Now you start talking about adding uh, what would be, what, a fourth, fourth team? In, yeah. in the playoff, or fifth. Excuse yeah, because you got, the, in the, you got the Cats for sure, UC Davis for sure, probably Montana for sure. One more win for Montana, they're in for sure. Idaho, yeah. I think one more win, they're in for sure. And then if NAU was to win out, it'd be five. Yeah, which is great for the conference, Coulter. That's a, that's a big deal. I know that we're always, as the Big Sky Conference representatives, always seems like chasing the Missouri Valley, um, in, in, and that's probably accurate. Um but to see another a fifth team in there would be would be huge. But you can bet Coach Best with chip on his shoulder down at Flagstaff that final week of the season, uh, that's going to be must see TV. Given NAU wins these next two. When it comes to then uh, Montana State moving forward, they have the two games they're going to define their season after this week. But they got a home game against Sac State this week. Sac State, I'm not sure what's going on there, man. That's. There's a lot of different reasons why you could have a two and seven record this time of year. One of them's just not good enough players. That's not the case. They have good players. One of them's bad coaching. That's also not the case. They have a veteran staff that's been around the big sky. I mean, Andy Thompson's been in the league for 20 something years and has always done a really good job. So, you know, part of it's probably turnover. I mean, they don't have anybody that's the same defensively as they did last year when they played the cats. That's probably part of it, but sometimes stuff just doesn't go your way too. Right. Uh, Either way, from a Cats perspective, they cannot be overlooking this Sac State team, in my opinion. No, yeah, no way. And they've always got players, and you already highlighted the quality coaches, the experience that they've got. Um, you know, Coach Thompson doesn't like the Cats. I can promise you that. Uh, and so he'll have his team ready to go. They've always got dudes on the other side. Um, but there are interesting seasons where seemingly a team has got a lot of potential. They've got weapons. They may have some turnover. 
but there's a lot to say about a team's ability to bounce back when things don't go your way. And, um, and they dropped a few games here or there and for them to battle back, it just seems like they've, they've struggled. And so uh, they will come ready. I bet they've come hot out the gates, uh, you know, on Saturday, but my guess is if they get punched in the mouth and things don't go their way, it's probably going to be a similar movie that we've seen the last couple of weeks with them, where they just, they, they haven't really showed up, but uh, you got to be careful. Even if you're at home, uh, you know, just like you mentioned, Eastern trying to spoil people's seasons. Uh, yeah, that's what they're playing for. They're not playing for a conference championship. They're not playing to go to the playoffs and they're trying to play, play spoiler. And so the cats better be ready. No doubt. And I think just from a matchup standpoint, regardless of what Sac State's record is coming into this game, Thompson's always put a high priority on having, you know, sideline to sideline, fast athletic defenses that really are predicated on speed. They almost never have huge, you know, front sevens. That's, he's always been a speed guy, NAU and Sac State uh, all these years. As we've seen over the years, uh, especially the, the recent history, the last five to six years, it's a bad formula against the Cats, man, because they're not just big up front. They're so athletic up front. If they get their hands on you, they just they just kick your butts. So uh, yeah. I, I wonder, you know, I, I think Montana State won't, won't try to do anything too fancy. I think they're just going to try to pound the rock and rush for 350 again and, and yeah. get another one at home. Yeah, and, t- and take care of the football, right? Take care of the football, limit penalties. You can't shoot yourself in the foot, win the turnover battle, limit the explosives on defense. Um, and, uh, th- I-, I do look at this cold. There is a big game for the Bobcat defense. I I've told you this. Uh, and again, I, I am rooting, you know, I'm rooting for the cats. I want them to continue to get things fixed. I do think they're still trying to figure out some of these things with, with injuries. And this is what good football teams do down the stretch. How do you con- continue to, continue uh, to improve? You've got young guys in really key positions in, in, in the linebacking core. This is a big game for them. Um, I know that they found a way to get stops last week, but they've got to continue to improve, right? They've got to be better this week than they were last week because their best is going to be needed in two weeks and in three weeks. And then obviously down the stretch in the playoffs, but uh, everything's out in front of this team. This is the time where you go and you put your best foot forward and you got to be playing your best football right now because uh, you know, you've got the playoffs looming and if you can find a way, to be at home during the playoffs, it changes things dramatically. So everything's in front of them, but I think this is a big, big test specifically for that Bobcat D. Can they rise up? Uh, there's going to be athletes on the other side. Can you show up specifically at the linebacker position and uh, play fast and play physical and get the job done? The craziest part, this I'll get you out of here on this, the craziest part is if they win on Saturday, they're 10-0 and for the first time ever. They've had a lot of double-digit win seasons, uh, a lot of great seasons. I think 18 Big Sky Banners that hang in Brick Breed and Fieldhouse. But never have they started a season with 10 straight victories. So uh, that's certainly on the line as well. And, and I, I think after that, obviously you want to chase the number one seed, a top two seed, all that stuff. But you get to 10, then you're playing with house money, man. Because then I think that, you, you know, you don't want to say it's okay or whatever. But, like, you could split your last two and still get a, a top four seed. So, uh, yep. I think that's a, it's a huge uh, ramifications on Saturday too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you, you know, that as a player and a coaching staff, right. You can say that, I mean, they, they're going to go one and know coach vegan talks about that all the time. Their players talk about that and that's their focus, but there, you, you know what you're trying to do. And, and, and that 10 and 0 start has never been done in program history. Uh, that's a big deal. And so that, that does loom and uh, hopefully provide some added juice and some motivation um, this is a, a really solid football team that hopefully has continued to get better and, and their best football is in front of them as long as they can stay healthy. He's Mike Ryder, joins us here weekly on the Big Sky Breakdown and the Sky on Sports YouTube channel. Mikey, drive safe. Appreciate the time, and uh, we'll catch up next week. Appreciate you, Colton. Thanks for having me. Man. Join Town Pump's Pump It Up Rewards Plus program and never pay full price for fuel again. Save five cents on every gallon every day at any town pump across Montana. Plus, earn and redeem points on your favorite in-store items to get free stuff with our clubs. Stop in and pick up a rewards card. Download the Pump It Up Rewards Plus app today. Or visit townpump.com rewards to register and start saving. Town-